Okay, so where we left off, we had created a rainbow, right? And then we had separated that rainbow through a variety of channels in a different program into these different halftone screens. This was the yellow. You zoom in here. So you can see those dots. And you see how the yellow angle is 90 degrees and zero degrees. So this is just a grid. <laughs> this is not a half drop pattern. This is just a regular grid. Everything lines up exactly. The magenta we set at 75 degrees. So you see this very steep angle. And then the cyan we set at 15 degrees, a very shallow angle. Because we were doing just a solid rainbow, there is no black in it. So we don't have any 45 degree black. Now what I can do is I can just put a gray background down and then put my, my type solution, my logo. Let's do the original one here. And then I can start putting these different halftone screens of the different colors behind it that are outputted from the rainbow, right? And that looks pretty nice as just a poster. Better than just blank, right? And then what if I kind of layer them together? So now what I have to do is I have to either take out all the white, which I can do by simply selecting all the whites with almost no tolerance, with only a two tolerance, right? And then just say select inverse and then duplicate that and turn it off, right? So now I have just the cyan with a little bit of that remnant white to give it some texture running behind. And that's a gray background, that's a black background, that's a white background. But now I can do the same thing with the magenta. And I can select just the white. There's a lot less of it. Okay. I'm going to up the tolerance to 32. And then say select inverse and duplicate it. I'll put it on a white background so you can see. Oh, and I gotta change this to normal mode. There we go. All right, so now if I turn on the cyan on top of the magenta, you start to see the overlaps happen, right? Except that they're both at 100%. So now I gotta take the cyan ink and I gotta take its opacity down a little bit. So you start to get that overlap, which you would really see in the printing. Okay, and that's kind of interesting. Next, I do the yellow, set it to normal mode. And how do I get the yellow screen? Well, I select all the whites. I say select inverse, I duplicate. And then I turn on the others. And then I flipped the magenta and put it on the bottom as well. See so what that looks like. Because I liked it at the top and the bottom. Right? And I changed the color slightly. So you can start to have fun with these dot screens once you have them. And now that magenta is just too strong. right? So what might I do with that? I might take its opacity down, just like I did with the cyan. But the opacity I'm going to leave at 100% is the yellow. Right? And I could even try a different blending mode with the magenta. Something like pin light. Yeah. So that can work really well. And then you get that kind of soft rainbow effect. It's not the same as having the, the solid color, right? It breaks it up into those dots. So what are some of the things you can do with those dots? Well, what I ended up doing was using uh, different layer effects and then rasterizing them 
and then capturing them so I could have those halftone dots on the edges of my illustration. And it just makes it a lot more active, a lot more interesting. And this is all just computer generated background. Now then on top of that, I could always put something else, some texture like this wood grain that I found. And I can put it behind it. Right? And that can be that can be my poster. And I kind of like that. It's nice. I can move a different texture up above it. Just to, to shift it from being so linear, being a little different. Up that opacity. Yeah, so if that's my finished poster, then I'm happy with it, and I'm going to save it as a PSD for myself. But then also save it as a JPEG to put up into the class photo bucket. Along with my black text solution and my color text solution. And in this case, my color text solution is the one with the halftone dots like kind of offset like a 3D movie behind the, uh, the black text, making use of color. I also use a little bit of color in the text here. So to save it that way, you save it as a JPEG. Photoshop's still going pretty slow. But notice how large these files are. So right now this poster is two and a half gigs which is about as large a file as you could ever save. So very quickly, I want to save it to the desktop as a JPEG, and it's going to reduce it substantially. And I still want it to be under 5 megabytes. And that's also because it's 16 by 20 inches. So I have to take it to a really low quality, but that's fine because it's just for online viewing. Now, the only thing this poster is missing is the white border. And all I would do to do to, to get that for my print would be to flatten everything as a TIFF. First merge everything, right? First say layer, flatten image. This is after I've already saved it as a Photoshop. That reduces the memory to only 100 megabytes versus two and a half gigs. And then I say um, image canvas size, and then I'm going to make it 17 by 22 with white as the extension and then I get a border and then I have my finished poster so save that as my TIFF T-I-F-F -F, with LZW always and then here is the JPEG that I would put into PhotoBucket Right. Why do we keep that, um, that PSD open, or why do we save it? So that we can separate all those layers if we need to. And it's going to go into the Assignment 8 folder. And I'm going to put mine into Instructional Examples. All right, so that's the, the long process for how you do color separations. But if you go to our Dropbox, our class Dropbox, and you go to Files, you'll see that there is a folder that you can download that's, set called, that's called Actions for Digital Lab. If you download the whole folder, and you can do this at home as well if you have Photoshop, And you unzip that folder. Come on. Mm. 
this will give you the tools that I'm showing you right now. So I'm going to unzip the actions. I've already loaded them into my computer, and they should be loaded on a lot of your computers, but if I've ever had to reset your defaults, it will lose them. So these are the actions. All of these actions, you'll see that there's one that says CARL in all caps, color steps. So that is a whole set of programs within Photoshop. Um, it's just a series of sequences that you program into Photoshop, just like what I showed you. Now these are my professional actions that I use. So they're at 300 pixels per inch, not 350. But let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to take this quick little composite I did. Oh, can't find it. Let's see. Let's take this one, this other spot illustration. And I'm going to show you how we can do the color separations, not to just a rainbow, but to our actual artwork, right? And you see, I actually added some halftone dots here, but I did that just with a grunge halftone, you know, uh, texture overlay. So what I'm going to do is just run an action on this. But before I can do that, I need to flatten everything. So what I usually do is save this as a different name and then flatten the image. So that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll flatten this quick, and then I'll say file, save as, because I don't want to overwrite my PSD. I'm going to save it as a TIFF to the desktop, and it's flattened. OK. Now I'm going to go to Window and Actions. And you're going to see if you have color, Carl color steps. And if you don't, if you only have default actions, you can go up to your, your Window options and say Load Actions. And then you can go to your Downloads, because you downloaded it from Dropbox, and you can select all those actions we just downloaded. I don't know why it's not coming up. Let's see. There we go. And then I can just select all of these and then open and they'll load just like that. And then as long as you use one and save it, it will keep that in Photoshop then from now on until you reset your defaults. So what I want you to do is go into Carl's customized or Carl's uh, color steps rather. And I want you to click on CMYK full run. Okay, because we don't want to just separate out the cyan, just the yellow, just the magenta, just the black. We want to do it for everything. And then you're just going to hit play. You should only do this if you only have one flattened image open in Photoshop. Because it's all automated, right? Once you hit play, it's like playing a VHS cassette, right? You don't want to dig into the VHS cassette like this and start messing with these. That would be bad, right? Instead, you just want to play it, see what you get. What it does is it outputs, here's your original file, it outputs a bunch of new files that are color separations in a way that's pretty visible because the dot size I pick is pretty large and it's made to look a little sloppy and retro. It's like a 25 dot screen. Okay, then it's, it puts them all together, but it does it in a way that's offset so that you have to hand set them. So. We start with black, which is at 45 degrees, right? And underneath that, I have yellow. And you see that those are already a little offset. So what I can do is then move the black if I want. If I don't want it to look sloppy, I can use the arrow keys and move the black to be right on top. And then I can use the magenta. And then I can use the cyan. And the cyan is, I always way offset it. And you can play with the, the layer order of the inks, right? But if they're matched up perfectly, this is how it looks. Now I can take all of those, and I usually put them in a folder, right? And then I copy it, Command-C, you know, edit, copy. Then I go back to the original, and I paste it on top. Now it's a little bit smaller because my actions make it 300 pixels per inch, not 350. So then I just transform it. And this is actually a good thing because it slightly softens it.